It's one of the biggest aircrafts in the world, yet it produces 90% less CO2 than any other plane of its size. Incredible, isn't it? Today, we're talking about the Airlander 10, a hybrid aircraft that's one of the most exciting and revolutionary projects of recent years. With its unique features, this aircraft promises to transform not only the way we see air travel, but the impact of air travel on the environment. That's why, in this video, we tell you all about this incredible project, from its history to its features. We're off. Airships have long since fallen out of favor. In the past, they were often used to transport people and goods. But the crash of the Hindenburg in 1937 changed all of that. On May 6, 1937, the LZ-129 Hindenburg, the largest commercial airship ever built, suffered a serious accident while en route from Europe to the USA. The journey was uneventful, but the landing was delayed by a thunderstorm. Just as 200 workers were about to moor her, a fire broke out in the stern of the airship. It was quickly fueled by dihydrogen. As it crashed to the ground, the diesel fuel from the engines turned the airship into a huge inferno. The accident claimed 35 lives and undermined confidence in airships to such an extent that they disappeared completely from the air. But the Airlander 10 aims to change all of that. It's one of the world's largest airships. What's more, it can be classified as either an airship or an airplane. It's designed by the British company Hybrid Air Vehicles, aka HAV. Let's look back at its history for a moment. In fact, the basic project was designed for the US Army. The aim was to carry out surveillance missions. In the 90s, HAV entered into a partnership with Northrop Grumman, an American aerospace and defense company. The concept was quickly adopted for the LEMV, Long Endurance Multi-Intelligence Vehicle Project. The prototype was named HAV-304. Its aim is to demonstrate that a medium to long endurance unmanned aerial vehicle is capable of providing intelligence and surveillance support. It's to fly at an altitude of 6 kilometers, with a range of 3,000 kilometers. It's capable of maintaining airborne for 5 days with crew and more than 2 weeks without. There's no rudder, but a side stick mounted on the right hand side, like an aerogyro. This commands the aircraft and controls the power of the blades. The airship also features a video surveillance system that allows the pilot to view the engines from a distance. But that's not all. It should be able to do without a landing strip, as it's capable of landing on any reasonably flat surface, on land or water. What's more, it can take off and land in confined spaces. It could therefore connect cities with no airport facilities. The airship whose lift is based on aerostatic and aerodynamic forces, has the particularity of having an elliptical cross-section with a streamlined flattened hull, whereas this type of aircraft normally has a circular cross-section. The purpose of this shape is to form a load-bearing body, contributing to aerodynamic lift as the airship moves forward. Buoyancy is provided by twin hulls filled with helium. This gas is lighter than air. These hulls have a total internal capacity of 38,000 cubic meters, and the pressure ensures that the airship maintains its shape. The airship is 91 meters long, 34 meters wide, and 26 meters high. The airship's cabin alone measures no less than 46 meters in length, with room for around 100 passengers. The craft has a volume of 38,000 meter cube. However, the project was abandoned in 2012 due to budget restrictions. It was thought that the project would fade into oblivion. However, a year later, the HAV company bought it with the intention of converting it for civil, scientific, and humanitarian activities. In the end, it was converted into a luxury aircraft. It was then sent back to the UK to Cardington Airfield before being reassembled, refurbished and modified. It was then renamed Airlander 10. Keeping its original size, the interior was redesigned by an English company called Design Q. It features a substantial main deck with four large floor-to-ceiling windows, offering great visibility. There's also a cockpit and an observer station. Engines and control surfaces are connected to fly-by-wire controls, using fiber optic cables to accommodate the large size of the vehicle and ensure responsiveness. Offering private rooms, a bar, and a relaxation area, it could accommodate between 20 and 100 people. According to the company, it could then provide the equivalent work of 15 fixed-wing aircraft at medium altitude. For thrill-seekers, parts of the airship's floor have been replaced by glass to reveal the void. The airship made its first test flight in 2012 in New Jersey, USA. Three years later, in 2016, it crashed on its second test flight. Fortunately, the accident occurred during landing, 
with no casualties and no structural damage. It's powered by four 242 kilowatt Thaler Centurion V8 diesel engines, which drive three bladed ducted propellers to provide the thrust required for flight and maneuvering. These engines operate in pairs, two at the rear of the airship and two along the sides of the forward fuselage. The two side motors can be rotated by 20 degrees in a vertical plane to guide the thrust. Each motor is equipped with a 50 kilowatt generator that supplies electrical power to the airship and its system. By using vectorial thrust, the motors can direct their thrust downwards to provide additional lift for takeoff. In addition, four triangular variable pitch vanes are positioned behind the motors to provide greater thrust control by directing it towards the tailplane. Four years later in 2020, the British company announces that it has evolved the aircraft's design to improve its aerodynamics, range and maximum load. It will also feature a hybrid propulsion system. Eventually, the company aims to go all electric. Already producing 75% fewer CO2 emissions than comparable aircraft in terms of distance flown and passengers carried, the aim is now to reach 90%. With hybrid propulsion, an electric drive can be offered during the flight. This will be powered by the airship's central generator. Thanks to the aerostatic hybrid approach, the fuel can be used without entering a gaseous state, which is a real economic advantage. The fuel is contained in a 12 meter long tank holding up to 9 tons of fuel, supplemented by rear and front tanks holding up to 4 tons. In all electric operation, it should reach 50 knots, or 92.6 km an hour, and up to 70 knots, or 130 km an hour, in hybrid electric mode. For example, a trip from Liverpool to Newcastle, a distance of around 200 km, could be made in 2 hours, with 90% fewer emissions than other aircraft. It'll have a range of 7,400 kilometers and fly at a maximum altitude of 20,000 feet. At the same time, it's announced that it'll enter service by 2026. Air Nordstrom is set to become its first user, almost 85 years after the last airship flight. At the time, HAV hired 500 people, mainly to start manufacturing the airship on an industrial scale, starting with 10 aircraft. With the Airlander 10, Air Nordstrom aims to offer sustainable short-haul flights. It should not be forgotten that, in the age of global warming, many European countries are in the process of restricting domestic and short-haul flights. This airship could therefore be the solution for sustainability and decarbonization of air transport. The company has also announced that it's working on the Airlander 50, which could carry 50 tons of freight. It should see the light of day in 2033. With its huge potential in terms of both energy efficiency and application flexibility, it's safe to say that the Airlander 10 is changing air transport. At a time when environmental concerns continue to weigh heavily on traditional aviation, the Airlander 10 is paving the way for a new era of more eco-friendly transport. By reducing its carbon footprint while offering unique operational advantages, this hybrid aircraft is set to play a major role in the future of aviation.